Oscar Rivero Lucy. I'm the DTC and membership monitor for Plonda K. Benedict. Welcome to my home. We have some very special wine here for you. It's um, our Plum Jack Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve 2017. We thought about this wine because I'm cooking one of the dishes that is traditional from where I come from, Spain, but also because my family was cooking these dishes as I grew up. And it's the perfect pairing for such a sophisticated wine. It has the depth and the character to stand up to a dish like a paella. You need something, uh, a big cut with a strong tannic structure. And this is our Plum Jack Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. And it comes in a beautiful wood box, all of them, in a magnet, 1.5 liter. So the first thing that we want to do today is actually open the magnet up. Because I'm not gonna decant it, I'm just gonna leave it open for around two hours and a half where we cook the pie. From Oakville, at the best peak of our fruit, our winemaker selects every year his choice of this block from Oakville fruit that will make it into the Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. It has 100% new French oak, and even though it could age for 20 years to come, this is ready to drink right now. And this magnum, I'm gonna open it for at least two to three hours where we're cooking dinner, because that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it today. What is more fun than having a magnum with you and your friends over at your favorite dish? Well, now that we have the wine ready and waiting, we're gonna get started with cooking. And to cook a paella, the first thing that you need is a paella dish. The paella dish not only is important because it actually cooks the paella on it, because it gives name to the paella dish. You cannot have a paella without the paella pan. So we have the pan very well heated. We put the olive oil and salt, and then we're ready to add the chicken, and we're gonna put on it in Jericho. We're going to chop a little bit of onion, just half an onion, shoot the top. This is enough for a whole pie. So I'm going to call my son to go to the house, chop in the onion. Amaya, would you like to give us a hand here with the onion? We also need some parsley. So just a handful. We just need uh, a handful of fresh parsley. We can put it in the sofrito. The tomato sauce that it goes in the house. <laughs> so the bio is to add something very important in my family. It's something that it always brought together. You can see it for a lot of people. It's also something that everybody knows in the family. Because it's, it's, it's a lot of people in here. So we're going to chop some of the parsley, coarsely, and we're also going to taste the pepper and cherry. You want to help me with the pepper? Okay. So you want to be careful. Do you want to work with me? So take those two. So now we're going to move the chicken to the side of the paella pan so it doesn't keep roasting. Look at that beautiful color that we just got there. That's what we want. And you see all these bits stacked on the pan? That is ultimately the most important flavor of the meat. It's uh, traditional in Spain not to put meat and seafood together on the same paella, but somehow it has caught people's imagination recently. It's kind of a more modern style, incorporating chicken, seafood, saltfish, all into the same dish, obviously without wheat rice, which brings all the flavors together. And if you want to kind of say it anywhere in your hand, yes, just move these around a little bit, so I can prepare the next all right? So we're gonna do the sofrito mix. The sofrito is after the vegetables are cooked, and as you can see, we're getting some, a little uh, blister into the skin of the pepper. And then we keep cooking all on the same plate. That's 
whenever we fry a pan or so big, we start cooking from the middle of the fire pan and you just push it against the corners when, uh, when they're ready. And then you will be putting the next ingredient, which is in the middle. This is where we should be doing our sofrito, which is diced tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes, you can use canned tomatoes, but make sure that you have enough sauce. The tomato juice has to be there because that's what it's gonna give the flavor profile. So, so far, we actually prepared the ingredients with the chicken, with a little bit of salt and olive oil. We ground it pretty well. We chopped the vegetables, which are only used red bell peppers. Finally, uh, julienne uh, cut. And then when they're brown, then you can do the sofrito, which is basically the onion, finely chopped, the garlic, and the tomato, the diced tomato. We're ready for the stock. So I have the stock ready on the side. You can use chicken stock, you can use seafood stock. I, this is a combination of both. No low sodium uh, stocks with the peanut paella. And while I'm cooking, I'm drinking, and what better thing to drink when you're cooking than something light and crisp? like our Chardonnay from Plum Jack. So, nothing better than a Chardonnay from Plum Jack to start the, the night and when you cook it. Uh, very light, uh, no malolactic fermentation. This is the perfect wine to pair with seafood, with uh, light chicken, with light dishes. Uh, it's perfect for the summer. It's not a big Hagenoki Chardonnay, the opposite of that. It has uh, salinity still fermentation and neutral French oak fermentations. We get this beautiful fruit, amazing fruit from uh, Carneros and also from Santa Helena, which gives it a little more brightness, a little more um, depth to this uh, Chardonnay from Macaroni. Enjoy! So now we have the paella bubbly. Finally, look at that beautiful mix of everything that we have put in. It's also the perfect time to add our spices. And nothing better than our azafran. Azafran, saffron, is actually uh, my grandmother, the she grew in her back, I used to say, well, this is more expensive than gold. And indeed, it is, and you can only use a very little to put into your paella. Some people will make a paella without saffron. I don't think there is a way to take this away. This is the most important ingredient in the entire paella. Into the pan. And after the saffron, we're gonna add another beautiful Spanish ingredient, which is our pimenton. We're gonna use the sweet version. My mother sent this from Spain, <laughs> but you can actually find it here in specialized stores. All right, you add very little of it, so I use it with the back of a teaspoon. You basically just throw a couple of those around. I actually like intense colors a little more. <laughs> and now we mix it well with the water. So we have the rice ready. I opted for this varietal of rice, it's paella rice. <laughs> it's bomba, which comes from Spain. And this is the perfect rice to cook, but I really like bomba, it's the traditional one. It's a little smaller grain, only two bags. <laughs> I actually think we're only gonna need one bag for this paella. We're gonna measure it against the water of the pan. So we do a little cross. And this cross has to go from one side of the pan to the other. And you just need to see like a finger of rice floating above the liquid. And then you do the other side. And again, make sure that only like a finger is floating above and cross it all the way to the other side. And we're ready for the final ingredient which is the seafood. 
Why you add it last? Because usually the rice takes around 20, 25 minutes to cook fully. So that's the time that it does uh, the seafood cook. And you don't want that overcooked. It needs to be juicy. So let's have to put the most important part of the paella. We can't wait too long because this is what's gonna give the flavor to the rice. We need to distribute the mejillones muscle <laughs> into the paella. And it's also gonna make it pretty. So we need to make sure that they're all over the paella pan, beautifully put. We have everything ready. Finally, we have all the ingredients in the paella. The last thing that I cooked was the seafood. And the only thing that we need to take care of is actually turning those prawns so they cook evenly from both sides. And now we have around 15 more minutes for it to absorb all the water. That's why it's so important to keep checking it to see if it's starting to burn on the bottom of the pot. Once you get that smell, you have to get really close. And once you start detecting that toasty rice burning uh, smell on the rice, it's time to let it rest. So we finally have our paella ready and we garnish it with a little bit of lemon. Some people like a little splash of lemon on top of the seafood. Serve the paella as it comes and the pan for everybody on the table. And most importantly, finally. We're gonna get to enjoy our Plum Day 2017 Cabernet for surfing. After two and a half hours of airing and breathing, this wine is ready to share. It's ready to be served with our beautiful paella. And this is kind of an occasion to enjoy. Share it, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with those closer to you. 